Hey there, Pete. Hope you're having a good time on Daddy Duty. Uh, this is your video lesson for today. Uh, let's see here are two things I want to talk about. I'll go down the list. If you want me to look at anything or have any questions, feel free to shoot those on over to me and I'm happy to take a look or uh, give my two cents. So, cool. Uh, so, number one is uh, Jerry Garcia's solo link concept that he likes to do. This is going to be a long term project. This is, this is uh, pretty far reaching, uh, but this is just the first level of it. What Garcia does a lot of times is he uses the cage chords, these chords here, C, A, G, E, D. We talked last time about how those are movable across the fretboard. For example, this right here is an E chord. It's a root six, which means that the home note is on this string right here. You can turn that into an F, an F sharp, G, G sharp, A. And all the chords down there, C, A, G, E, D, they're all able to do this, and their minor counterparts too, so like E minor. A minor and D minor, the most useful ones. Um, those are also as, uh, those are also movable as well. And this is just the first step of kind of really wrapping your fingers around what he's doing a lot. He uses those these shapes as the basis of his solos a lot of times, um, or the things that he likes to do. So the first thing you do is let's take a E form C chord, right? So I'm going to get this E shape right here. So my power my my bar chord is going to click this, and I'm going to take this, swap this out. My first finger is free, so I can now bar with it. And I'm going to move that up the fretboard until I run into a C right here at the eighth fret. All right, so now I got myself a C chord using an E form shape, right? So it sounds like this right here, and then it sounds like this up here, right? Those are both C chords, and today someone walking by who doesn't play guitar, have perfect pitch, he goes, hey, those are two C chords. That's what, the way he's doing right there. So we have our C chord here, then we play a C chord up here, right? And so what, what Jerry Garcia, the first level of this, right? There are many levels. The first level of it, of it is, can you play them broken apart? What I mean by that is I'm gonna take this shape right here and I'm gonna go play them separately one more time. I'm already taking the, the strings that I am fretting. I am taking these, these, the notes that I'm fretting on this chord, and instead of playing them like one big chunk, right, I'm gonna play them individually. The ones I'm after, however, for this technique, are the ones on the fourth string, the third string, and the second string. So that'd be like me playing that chord there, right there, and I play string four, string three, and string two. That's literally what I'm doing. You go, hey, wait a minute. I don't need to pull these fingers down. I'll just put down the ones I need for that, but it's still gonna be the same one. So I have 10th fret on the fourth string, ninth fret on the third string, eighth fret on the second string, All right? So I have this. This is the master chord where it comes from. Um, I'm only playing these three strings and I'm playing them This is at the heart of his style of good playing guitar, where he's outlining chords when he's soloing. Right? And entryway into jazz, right? So after a couple years, you get bored doing this, and we'll start moving into the jazz territory if that's what you want to do. All right, anyway, so if I take that and... Let's right back track, good. So we got that right there. So I have my backing track. That's the chorus, which is the C, the F times two, back to the C times one, right? So what I'll do is I'll take that shape and just simply just practice. And then what I'll do is I'll combine it with that A minor pentatonic that we talked about last time, this guy right here. Our pentatonic over this, the three note sequences. And then into that arpeggio shape, the broken chord shape. Now this is just level one, now you're just gonna figure out where things are. We're gonna make it more complicated relatively quickly. 
But the first thing is understanding that what Garcia is doing is he is he's taking these movable shapes that he knows, like this one right here, right? Or this uh, C down here, and he breaks them up into pieces. So if I did. So I was very much punctuated with all those broken chord arpeggios in there. Cool. <clears throat> Just do that on the C chord this week, and then when we get another tunes like China Cat or something like that, um, I'll show you what he does for those songs. Good, so that's the first thing. Like I said, you can combine that concept with your with your A minor pentatonic, and it'll sound just fine over, over Casey Jones, the soloing section. Next thing, number two, is last week we started talking about the verse section of the song. That's this right here is, you know, uh, this is a, this. Two, then F, G, two, repeats that C, C, two, three, four, D, two. <coughs> and we have those new chords in there. Now, last week I gave you the E down here, the A minor down here, but I think these sound better as bar chords higher up on the neck. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take some more cage chords and we're gonna move them around on the fretboard. So for example, you have um, in the song, um, he has an E chord. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take an A chord, right, you'll agree with me, that is an A chord, and we're gonna turn that into a root five bar chord, which means the home note of the chord, the name, one that gives its name is found on the fifth string. So I have my A here, and if I scooch up a fret, A sharp, right, because that's an A sharp right here on the fifth string, right? So you have A, A sharp, I go here to B, put that chord shape in position, got myself a B chord. I move up here, right, got myself a C chord. You can even fret it like this, some people do a double bar here. I, I'm not sure if I taught it to you yet, but I'll just keep it simple like this for right now. Got yourself a C chord here, go up to the next one, C sharp, D, D sharp, and then E, right? So you have an E right there. So what you can do is you put your A form E chord, which I'm using the form of this A, and putting it up here where the root note is an E, and then voila, it is now an E chord. Even though it is the form, it looks like this down here, but I bumped it up here. So when I play the song, I'm going for that. So F, F, E, E, and then I go to A minor. Now for that one, I'm using an E minor form, E minor form. What I do is I have my E minor chord right here. And I have my low note right here, which is an E, it's a root six chord shape, right? An E minor, right? If I do this, F minor, F sharp minor, G, because that note right there is a G. I go G sharp minor, that note's a G sharp. And then come here to an A, play my chord right there, I have myself a A minor chord using an E minor form because the form is this shape right here and I bumped it up here where this note is an A, therefore voila, it is an A minor chord. So with uh, Casey Jones chord progression, I have C, no, this is the verse, two, three, four to a D, two,
Oh, how's that wing part? Something like that. <laughs> Get back and look at it. Well, cool, man. So work on that for me. Like I said, if you want me to take a look at anything or if you have any questions about that, feel free to shoot over on over to me. You're not bothering me. You can shoot me over a text and uh, I will answer when I get it. All right, man. Take care. I'll see you next week. Bye.